Good day everyone! For today's teaching demo, we will be talking about computer basics, which is a lesson intended for grade 4 elementary students. These are today's lesson objectives. Number 1. The students will be able to define what ICT is. Number 2. The students will be able to determine the basic parts of a computer and identify its functions. And of course, number 3. The students will be able to apply these basic concepts in the future topics or lessons. So without further ado, let us start this teaching demo. Good day students! I hope everyone is doing just fine. But before we formally start this lesson for today, let us first have a short prayer. Let us bow our heads, close our eyes, and feel the presence of our Almighty Father. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of life that you have given us. Thank you for the food, the shelter, and the clothing that you have provided us day by day. Thank you so much for these talents that you have given us and may we use them wisely and may we use them as well to glorify your name as always. Thank you dear Lord for this chance that we will again learn something new and may this be our guide towards our career in the future. We couldn't ask for more Lord and we couldn't thank you enough for all the blessings that you have given us. Please guide us always, please guide our parents and may this lesson today bring us enlightenment and may we all learn something new. Thank you, dear Lord. And this is all we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One more thing, students. Please be in your most convenient places first, for we will now start our lesson. Before we proceed to our main topic, let us first recap our previous lesson, which was all about... You are correct, creating a word file. And today, we will all learn something new. Aren't you excited? I am. But before we get to that, let us first have a game. Now this game is called, Be My Guess. The mechanics are simple. I will flash random words in this screen right here, and you will have to guess what its definition is. Are you ready? Let's go! Do you know what this word means? How about this one? And finally, this one. Oops! Time's up! Time for round two. We pretty much have the same mechanics for round two. The only difference is that I will show you pictures instead and you will have to guess what that picture is. Are you ready? Do you know what this picture is? How about this one? Don't give up yet. Try guessing what this picture is. Time's up! You all did great! Congratulations! Now class, I want you all to know that the pictures I've shown you a while ago are connected or associated to a computer. And the terms or the words that I've shown you a while ago are terms used under ICT. Now ICT or Information and Communication Technologies is a broader term for IT or Information Technology which refers to all communication technologies including the internet, wireless networks, cell phones, computers, software, middleware, video conferencing, social networking, and other media applications and services enabling users to access, retrieve, store, transmit, and manipulate information in a digital form. But don't you worry guys, because we will not tackle that at all. We will just focus on the basic parts of a computer. Do you know what a computer is? Take a look at this picture. Does this look familiar to you? 
That's great to hear! So for today's lesson, we will tackle the basic parts of the computer. Let us start with number one, the computer case. The computer case is the metal and plastic box that contains the main components of the computer, namely the motherboard, the central processing unit or the CPU, and the power supply. The front of the case usually has an on and off button and one or more optical drives. So, for your convenience, this is how a computer case looks like. Familiar now? Or have you heard of the term system unit? Others commonly call it as that. But the computer case and the system unit is basically just the same thing. Some of you may be more familiar with these types of computer cases or system units because of its modern design. And it's probably or basically just how computer cases or system units are designed in this modern generation. Let us now proceed to the second basic part of the computer. And that is the monitor. Now the monitor normally works with a video card to display images and text on the screen. Most monitors have control buttons that allow you to change the monitor's display settings. And some monitors also have built-in speakers with them. Newer monitors usually have LCD or liquid crystal display or LED or light-emitting diode displays. These can be made very, very thin and they are often called flat panel displays. Older monitors use CRT or cathode ray tube displays and they are usually heavier, larger, and they take up more desk space. So these are how monitors look like. Are you familiar with that? That's great to hear. Now that you are familiar with the monitor and you know what the monitor is, let us now proceed to the third basic part of a computer, which is the keyboard. The keyboard is a peripheral device that allows the user to input text into a computer or any other electronic machinery. The keyboard is an input device and is the most basic way for a user to communicate with a computer. This is how the keyboard looks like. Familiar with it now? Again, some of you may be more familiar with other keyboards such as these because of its modern design and it's basically what we see on computer shops and maybe in your homes nowadays. All of these keyboard keys have their own specific and special functions, but we will not discuss that today. We will just tackle that on the future lessons or topics as we proceed to the basics of ICT. Familiar with the keyboard now? Of course you are! Let us now move on to the last basic part of a computer, which is… You guessed it right! The mouse! Just like the keyboard, the mouse is also an important tool for communicating with a computer. Commonly known as the pointing device, it lets you point to objects on the screen, click on them, and move them. Now this is how a mouse looks like. Are you now familiar with it? Of course you are. Of course, in this modern generation, computer mouses come in all sorts of forms, colors, designs. Some become in wireless and some can just be connected via Bluetooth. Imagine how technology has upgraded so much that it has become more and more convenient for us as time goes by. Amazing, right? We are not done yet. Of course, there are other devices that can do the same thing as a mouse. And many people find them easier to use and they also require less desk space than a traditional mouse. Some of the mouse alternatives are Number 1. A trackball Are you familiar with this thing? So a trackball has a ball that can rotate freely. Instead of moving the device like a mouse, you can roll the ball with your thumb to move the pointer. Let's take a look at this picture. 
Aren't you amazed by this invention? You can just roll your thumb above the ball and you can calibrate to wherever you want in the screen. Isn't it amazing? Would you rather use this as a mouse or would you want a traditional mouse? If you really don't prefer the trackball, let us move on to this other alternative. Are you familiar with this picture? That's great to hear. And that thing is called a touchpad or a trackpad. Now this thing right here is a touch-sensitive pad that lets you control the pointer by making drawing motions with your finger. Touchpads are common on laptop computers. Now that you have learned the four basic parts of a computer, it is now time for an activity! Now it's time to get those brain cells working for this fun activity. First off, we'll need to divide the class into two groups. Each group will be given cards which contain a question. Each group must collaborate and think of the best answer before presenting it in front of the class. Are you now ready? Let's go! Let us have the group one first. For group 1, this is your question. Among the four basic parts of the computer, which do you think is the most important or most essential? And please include the reason why. Choose a representative or a reporter and present it in front of the class. Now for group 2, this is your question. Do you think computers are still important in this generation of mobile or smartphones and tablets? And please include your reason as well why. Choose a reporter or a representative and present it in front of the class. Are you now ready? Your 10 minutes starts now! A few moments later. That was a really wonderful presentation, class. Congratulations to all for a job well done! But we are not done yet. Let us have another challenging activity. This calls for a quiz. I will now flash these questions and you will have to answer them in 5 minutes. Your 5 minutes starts now. Great job, everyone! I am sure that you are now equipped with the right amount of knowledge that you can of course use in the next topics or lesson that we will discuss. But before we go home, let us first have this assignment. Everybody done now? That's great to hear! Once again, let us all remember the basic parts of the computer and please bring your assignments in the next meeting. That's it for today class. Thank you for listening to Teacher Chris and may we all see each other again in the next lesson. Thank you and goodbye class. Bye-bye. See you all next time.